As a registered nurse, working as a bedside nurse gets very busy. We have so much to do, from assessing our patients to prioritizing care, passing meds, time constraints, caring for complex patients, and most importantly, making decisions under pressure. I have created a series of videos where I will be sharing clinical scenarios that require critical decision making. Scenarios that aren't commonly discussed in class, but perhaps will occur in a clinical setting. So if you want the notes of this version, be sure to click on the link below for your free copy. This will allow you access to my growing email list with upcoming notifications on future courses. With that said, I have created a series of clinical scenarios that require critical decision making. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. It's 7.15 a.m. on the telemetry unit and I just got report on all three of my patients for the day. I have introduced myself to my patients and let them know I will be their nurse today. At this point, I like to sit down, review the charts from the surgeons to the panel of providers. That gives me information to better care for my patients. I look at labs, vitals, and most importantly, trends. I'll put together a timeline of what I'll be doing during my shift from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. as the list will change, but it's used as a template to help guide me. Oh, one second, I have a call coming in. Hello? This is Christina, nurse practitioner. Mm hmm Okay, sure. I'll be right over. Thank you. So it's 7.30 a.m. and I just got a phone call from the triage nurse who is monitoring my patient's vitals at the nurse's station. I was told from the triage nurse that patient Mrs. Smith in room 32 has a low blood pressure, 70 over 52, and needs a follow-up. So let me update you quickly on what's going on with Ms. Smith while we head on over to the patient's room. Mrs. Smith is an 87-year-old female one-day post-op status post lobectomy for lung carcinoma, which was an incidental finding and discovered three months ago when she went to see her PCP for a chief complaint of persistent cough for two months, and she doesn't even smoke. They found a mass or growth from her chest x-ray and then they worked her up. So here we are today and she currently has one posterior chest tube to water seal with an air leak and a PCEA, a patient controlled epidural analgesia that contains fentanyl with bupivacaine with a setting of 5, 2, 12, and 4. She is part of thoracic services and pain management is following her as well. She has a history of diabetes, hypertension, and GERD. So I'm at the bedside with the information provided as the RN, what is the first thing you wanna do for the patient? Select the best option. A, call a code. B, ask Ms. Smith, how are you feeling? C, recheck the blood pressure. Or D, review the patient's medications to see if there was any medication that could cause hypotension. The answer is B. You want to ask Ms. Smith, how are you feeling? You want to differentiate symptomatic versus non-symptomatic. And you're looking for signs and symptoms of hypotension. Mrs. Smith responds and says she is feeling tired while sitting up in bed. But at bedside rounds 15 minutes ago, she was engaging in conversation. So there is a change and the patient is symptomatic. Then you would immediately go with option C and recheck the blood pressure as this would all happen in less than 30 seconds to reflect if it is a true blood pressure reading, as you wanna see trends and you wanna verify that the blood pressure cuff is on appropriately. So as we're waiting on the next blood pressure reading, let's quickly go through a review of systems from her morning baseline assessment. So her neuro status. Neuro, she's alert and oriented times four. On report, I was informed that she is a BMAT three. She's ambulatory with minimal assist. She has a PCEA that is a patient-controlled epidural analgesia. The dressing is clean, dry, and intact. The PCEA contains fentanyl with bupivacaine. The settings are 5, 2, 12, and 4. Cardiac, she's normal sinus rhythm on the monitor, no ectopy. Her systolic blood pressure ranges from 110 to 130 is her baseline. She maintains a MAP greater than 65. She was started on metoprolol for AFib prophylaxis and her first dose was at 6 a.m. this morning. Respiratory, she's on two liters nasal cannula, setting 97%. The night nurse attempted to titrate down her oxygen but failed her trial as she desats, not being able to maintain sats. 
greater than 92%, likely due to the PCA, and she doesn't have a history of OSA. The GI, they just advanced her diet from clears to regular diet. She denies nausea or emesis, and she's tolerating well. GU, she has a Foley to gravity. Her hourly range is between 30 to 50 mils per hour. Her skin is intact, no pressure sores. Her surgical wound, she has one left posterior chest tube to water seal with an air leak, team is aware. Output is about 30 to 60 mils every four hours with serosanguineous drainage. IV access, she has a left peripheral IV, 20 gauge AC, and a right 20 gauge peripheral IV on her hand that are both saline lock. Her labs are the following as listed. So I wanna highlight the following when I'm looking at the labs. I'm looking at trends. However, my eye is gravitated towards sodium, which is 135. Her potassium is 3.7. I don't see any ectopy on the monitor as well, and the trends are fine. Hemoglobin is 11. I like to look at trends, looks fine. There's no sudden drop, especially for your patients that just had surgery, you wanna monitor that. And her WBC is 10. I typically can sometimes see a slight elevation due to surgery. And from what I'm looking at, these are all normal trends. Okay, so here are the newest vitals at 7.40 a.m. Her heart rate is 90, blood pressure is 70 over 40 with a MAP of 58. Her oxygen is 97% on two liters nasal cannula, respiratory rate of 12, and her pain, she said, is about one out of 10. So at this point, as a bedside nurse, given this information, what would be the first thing you would want to do for the patient? Is it A, inform the patient that she just had surgery and her blood pressure is low, and this is normal, she should just drink more fluids? B, stop the PCEA and put the patient in a supine position, then inform pain management on your assessment findings and update your MAR to reflect stop time. C, check a blood sugar reading. D, assist the patient out of bed to a chair to help mobilize as ambulation is priority with thoracic services status post lobectomy. Or E, page thoracic services to discontinue metoprolol. The answer is B, you wanna stop the PCEA and put the patient in a supine position, then inform pain management on your assessment findings and update your MAR to reflect stop time. You wanna keep in mind that PCEA can drop patients' blood pressures, so caution with care, especially for the elderly population. Mrs. Smith, she's an 87-year-old female, so not only do I stop the PCEA, I clamp the site at the epidural so nothing accidentally infuses into the epidural. So it was not A, as patient is symptomatic and showing signs of hypotension and needs further nursing interventions. It was not C, checking a blood sugar reading is not priority at this point, although the patient does have diabetes mellitus. And it was not D, because if a patient is hypotensive and symptomatic, you do not want to get a patient out of bed to a chair as they are are at greater risk of falling. It was not E because the patient is placed on metoprolol for AFib prophylaxis status post lung surgery. As there are hold parameters and at the time it was given, the patient's blood pressure was safe and within goal and her heart rate is currently 90, so it's okay. So after this point, you want to monitor the patient's vitals every 15 minutes. You want to follow up with pain management. As long as pain is controlled, it's likely the PCA will remain off for two hours and restart it at a lower rate based on the discretion of pain management team. So two hours have passed. The most recent blood pressure is the following for vitals at 9.40 a.m. Heart rate is 80, blood pressure is 110 over 72 with a MAP of 65. Oxygen is 97% on two liters nasal cannula, respiratory rate of 12, and pain, she said she's feeling a three out of 10, but it's tolerable. So we have received orders to titrate down on the PCEA with a new setting of three, two, 12, and four, and verified with a second RN. Pain management has added on other options to help the patient with her pain, such as gabapentin, 100 milligrams, PO, TID, to help with neuropathy, and is a great adjunct option. 
Since vitals have normalized and the patient is no longer symptomatic, she has been able to transition out of bed to a chair with plans to ambulate if able to tolerate. All right, if you appreciate the content, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Follow me for more and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.